And we're live. Hey guys, uh, we are having a little bit of a interesting time getting going here. As you can tell, I am waiting on my lovely co-host, co Ashley Tullis. Um, she actually got stuck up in traffic and has been rushing to get back down so that we're not on our phones um, driving while we're doing our podcast. A couple of you uh, fussed at me last week, and that's fine. I deserved it. It was hands-free, though, I'm just saying. Um, anyway, third week, third week of the weekly drip where Ashley Tullis and I, who are both local real estate agents, um, talk about everything we love about Dripping Springs. Um, we are both community enthusiasts. Ashley actually goes out of her way to, uh, to make sure that people know that about her. Um, I myself love everything about Dripping Springs. Um, so we decided to bring this podcast and talk about exactly that, our favorite things about Dripping Springs. While you're on, and I see we've got a couple of people starting to get on, feel free if you've got questions about anything about Dripping Springs, whether it's places to go, things to do, places to eat, um, our favorite restaurants or favorite hangouts, feel free to ask, pop it up in the comments, and uh, we can see your comments as we're going here. So we'll definitely uh, answer your questions. Um, we are realtors in the area. And so if you've got real estate questions, obviously you are more than welcome to ask real estate questions. Although that's not entirely the focus of this, I would say it's actually a very small portion uh, of this weekly broadcast. And now Ashley's been gone for two minutes and I'm running out of things to say. She's usually one that spurs the commentation or commentary. Um, I'm going to talk about, let me see, what am I going to talk about? Oh, my wife asked what we were talking about today. And I told her that we were going to talk about the last places that we had shopped in Dripping Springs. And she asked about one that we'd been shopping at quite a bit lately. That's not what I'm going to talk about later. And here comes Ashley. Hi. So what I was going to talk about real quick, Ashley, because I was running out of time, is another place that my wife and I uh, actually love to um, bring our business to in Dripping Springs, and that's Weathered Hands Coffee. I know that you've heard us talk about Weathered Hands before. Uh, Mike and Nicole Trevino moved out here just a couple of years ago, and they roast coffee at their house on the northwest side of Dripping Springs. The coffee is phenomenal. They've got a few different roasts. They've actually just started a monthly subscription program that we are a part of, and uh, we just got our second delivery and I haven't dug into it yet. It is a, I forget what he told me. It's a, it's a specific roast. It's the first time that he's doing it. And um, the good thing about weathered hands is all of their coffee is, I'm going to mess all of this up, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's sourced responsibly if that makes sense. So the people that are, that are picking the fields and, and all of that, they're all paid fair wages, fair labor laws and all of that stuff. Uh, Mike and Nicole go out of their way to make sure that the people they're getting their coffee from are actually taken care of. So uh, another local business, if you have not had their coffee, you can get it from Juan down at uh, Lemuse Coffee Shop. He has Weathered Hands there that you can get roast. Um, or you can go to, I believe it's weatheredhands.com and just uh, buy their coffee directly from site. So if you're a coffee fiend like me, yes. If you like to put a bunch of stuff in your coffee, I don't know. I don't know that you can really tell the nuance, but for me, black, strong, that's how I start my day. So anyway, I'm done with my infomercial, Ashley. Talk. <laughs> well, um, I actually just kind of wanted to touch on something that you just shared, um, that they have like ethically sourced coffee and it kind of blow, well, not so much now, but it blew my mind when I first learned that there's some like dirty business going on in the coffee world. Ooh, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd always heard about like the diamond. Not, not, not. Starbucks. Um, but I knew like the diamond industry had a real problem with that. Um, and it didn't occur to me until I was well into adulthood. Um, when somebody kind of revealed to me, um, that the coffee industry suffers from that. And it was only recently, um, whenever we were in leadership dripping springs together that I learned that the same thing happens in the chocolate industry. Chocolate. And I'm going, holy crap. I had no idea um so i think like it's it's 
good to not only point out like, yes, you will be supporting a local business, but you're like supporting like the good that comes with that as well. It's ethical. And so you should feel really good about, I mean, who cares if you put cream and sugar in your coffee and you can't taste That's it? Fair. At least you can feel good about it, you know? Right. You, you, know <laughs> you know that you're helping people actually make a, a living wage uh, somewhere in the world, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah, and I just remembered also, um, in, a, in addition to Lemuse carrying it, they've got bags of it at 12 Fox Brewery out on Fitzhugh because it's right around uh, the corner from, from Mike and Nicole. So you can actually buy it at 12 Fox as well. Those are the two places locally that I know you can get it. So, Man, while we're on the subject of local, which I think is what we're going to talk about for the yeah. next 20 minutes, like... <laughs> Shout out to all the businesses back in March that were like, oh, we can't be open for this. So we're going to pivot and hello, pop up grocery stores like markets, yep. I guess, or not stores, pop up markets. Like that's pretty freaking amazing. Um, every distillery I can think of is like, oh, we make hand sanitizer we're now. Working. Yeah, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, and in fact, I, it's been a few months now, but I was talking with Jamie. She's the director of science and sustainability at Treaty Oak. And she um, went through the process on like why distilleries are equipped to do that and what the rigmarole had looked like with, I guess, the state or federal laws. I'm not quite sure on getting that out to the public. So I'm just really, really impressed how businesses have managed to stay afloat when basically everything is making it impossible. Yeah, it, it really is. And and you said it right with pivot. And a lot of times it seems like they're just juggling 50 things to see what sticks. Um, we just lost a couple more local businesses this past week. Um, and, and that sucks, but the ones that are, that are still going and, and again, able to pivot and, and offer different things of value, uh, it's, there's some pretty, pretty impressive entrepreneurs out here. We'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and I know that that's what we would like to spend our time, um, chatting about today is local businesses, you know, where, where, what are the places that we personally hit up? Um, you know, how can we spread the word so other folks will go check them out too, if they aren't already. And then right. I think it also should be said, um, we're, Chris and I are not going to cover every place in town. We want to know your yeah. favorites too. Um, like for sure, drop those down in the comments because we definitely want to go and patronize those places so they can get through it together. You know, like all of us, we're in the same same boat, same creek. Our paddles just look really different. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do a little commentary on that because it seemed like that's where we were kind of going with this video, uh, weekly video series. And it's important to both of us. But one of the things, and Erica, if you don't know Erica, it's my wife. Um, she likes to point out kind of when <sighs> you see this on Facebook a little bit that when a business ends up having to shut its doors, there's a lot of people that say, oh my gosh, that was one of my favorite businesses, or I loved that place, or you know what, I still hadn't had a chance to go there. Or, you know, it, it's there's a lot of, of that type of, of commentary on the Facebook post when somebody closes. And that's when I reached out to you and said, hey, I think maybe that's where we need to make a focus of this and really just encourage people, guys, if you've got the means, if your income is not hurting and you can still patronize businesses, go to your local businesses. Those are the people who are really, really hurting. The large nationwide chains, the global chains, Amazon is definitely not hurting right now. Um, but the local businesses, the people that you can actually help by, you know, instead of, uh, I don't know, instead of going and ordering, what what's the, the fruit and vegetable that's ugly? Uh, what's the online what is it called jackfruit it's real ugly no, no, the, oh. they, they, they talk yeah it is ugly they talk <laughs> about how it's deformed fruit and you can get it shipped to your door oh imperfect produce imperfect, yeah imperfect produce yeah. things like that instead of going there wednesday i think we've still got a farmer's market that has fruit local uh, local fruit and vegetables right we sure do um every wednesday at the triangle three to six yeah. so that's where 
290 and Rancho 12 intersect. Um, it's put on by the, the cities. I mean, you have that whole triangle filled with vendors. Right. Um, actually, last time I went, um, I just want to share this because, you know, it's hot as all get out. So when it's hot as all get out, I'm thinking peaches and tomatoes. Um, but <laughs> last time I went, there was um, a table and it was the mushroom gal. And um, she had mushrooms I had never heard of before. And there was one in particular. It was like like the size of my hand. And it was the lion's mane mushroom. Very um, good. I got some before. Yeah, they're awesome. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I'm like Googling about it. And it's like you can really fake yourself out that it's like seafood. Like people make like imitation yeah. crab cakes out of it. Um, it mimics the texture of lobster. So my husband made like, I don't know, $1 noodles with some butter, I don't know what was in there, some sorcery, maybe right. wine, I don't know. But by the time Probably he was done with that lunch, it tasted like a $25 plate of food. Like it was so good. Um, and just every Wednesday right up the road, there's all kinds of goodies in there. So it's yeah, it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't. Right. And no, I know you have. I'm talking to you, internet. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but, but you brought up a, a, a really good point. Also, when you're going to local places, you can actually talk to them about what they have. If yeah. I had seen Lion's Mane um, or Lion's Head, whatever it was, uh, uh, fungus, <laughs> mushrooms uh, at HEB, I would do like I do with jackfruit and just kind of look at it odd and kind of go, you know. Eh. But when you go to some somewhere like the farmer's market and they've got it out, they're more than happy to tell you about it, talk to you about how to prepare it, what, you know, what – if it's good for you, you know, what vitamins, minerals and stuff like that, it ha you've got a source of knowledge right there that you don't have at HEB or, you know, I guess you could Google it on your phone, but it's still not the same. So. Oh, no, definitely not the same. I, I totally agree. And, you know, to to your point, if I saw it at HEB, I probably wouldn't think to Google it. I would just go on to my list because I shop with a list. But um, some of the fun and flexibility of our farmer's market is I it's not H-E-B, so it is going to be different every week. So you can get creative and you can just find all kinds of really cool stuff there. Um, Chris, let's let's do a quick uh, Q and A. I'll ask, I'll do the Q, you do the A's. Oh, great, okay, awesome, here we go. All right, favorite breakfast taco? <laughs> Everybody that follows me on Facebook knows this is Raza's. I know. <laughs> You, you only need one and you can get all kinds of stuff. Oh, yes. Ross's. What about you? Favorite breakfast taco? Uh, the Sitgo gas station. Yeah, those are phenomenal, too. <laughs> now, a lot of people love Flores and it's not the big Flores Mexican restaurant. It's the Flores trailer over by the high school. And I will mm -hmm. say the Hillary breakfast taco at Flores is, is, a, is, a, is a tight second or third to Ross's, but Ross's is still my favorite. So I think um, Laura's is my son's favorite. Um, he's not an egg eater. He's a potato eater. Um, so, you know, we've been able to get away for he's he's only nine. So for like five years, we're like, it's got French fries in it. And <laughs> he's all over it because they look like French fries. I think it yeah. might be French fries. They're delicious. Um, but the, the gas station is like, well, that's that's the spot for me personally. Um, last week we were. We talked about favorite sweet treats. So I know you like the Frio spot. Mine is Voodoo Ice. Um, let's see. Uh, favorite place to take a lunch meeting? Ooh. Ooh. Favorite place to take a lunch meeting? You know, it, it's one of two. Um, wow. That's hard. Okay. Um, well Go ahead, go so I'm putting you on the spot. Um, it kind of depends on what type of meeting it is. Um, yeah. But my favorite place to take a lunch meeting is Tilly's every day of the week. I would eat there every darn day of the week. See, I've never taken a lunch meeting there. I'm not quite as big time as you are. That's 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 kind of a, that's kind of a big deal right there. Actually, I just wanted to think about Tilly's for lunch. So that's a good one. Yeah, um, they have um, fish and chips on their menu at lunch. It's not on their dinner menu, and it's uh, redfish. Ooh, ooh. Redfish fish and chips, like really, really good. Okay. Um, I I think probably just, and I'm going to say this because I've gone there more for lunch than any other place, is probably homespun. Um, okay. 
and I like their um, the uh, uh, French dip at Homespun. All and right. Here, I, I've always got at least two. This one's going to blow people's minds. At uh, at Fitzhugh and two ninety, there's a gas station, and in the back of it, there's a little Mexican restaurant, and their lunch is off the charts. Um, no so way. I, Oh my gosh! Well, it's just their food in general. If, if I'm meeting a, um, if it's if it's a buddy of mine or or an industry friend or or you know one of my builders or or just somebody that doesn't mind just really greasy tacos and stuff like that, I take them to the back of that gas station. Everybody's like, oh my god, I had no idea this place was here. So <laughs> there you know. go. There's yeah. your little underground dripping springs right there. I love it. I love it. I think it's technically Austin, but we're gonna take that tip. I'm gonna. Um, assume since it's on the west side of Fitzhugh, we're going to claim it. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, fun little change on the Highway 290. Did you notice? I don't. After after I got my hand slapped for being on the road and doing this last week, my first in uh, my first impulse is to say no no i haven't noticed because everybody's still <laughs> driving as fast as they always do but um, yes, yes. yeah uh, I, i've noticed the signs i have <laughs> yep new signs are up 55 all the way to and from austin brace yourself try not to get a ticket my car doesn't like to go 55. i drive like an old man so i usually <laughs> I'm usually within five miles of the speed limit either way. So I just kind of flip. I'm the guy that everybody flips off when they're passing. So that's me. All good. All good. We know you're old. It's all good. <laughs> oh, what else? <laughs> um, you, you, it's Q&A. What else is Q&A? Um, favorite place to take your wife on a date? <laughs> Only because she always picks it. It, it last stand brewing company. I mean, Love it. <laughs> just out for, you know, it's right around the corner from the house. So we go and grab a quick beer every once in a while. I mean, not now because you can't sit out there and do it. Um, yeah. But I, like I said, there's always two. So it's last stand and El Rey. Uh, as you may have noticed, I'm a bit of a Mexican food fan. El Rey. <laughs> I, love, I love El Rey. <laughs> and my wife. What about you? Good date with John. Well, um, my husband and I rarely get a date. Like it doesn't happen a whole lot because we're a family of three and, you know, being we only have one, uh, he, he kind of comes all the way along wherever we go. Uh, so uh, I'm going to humble brag a little bit, if I may. This is a loaded question. I knew what I was walking into. And we got to go to La Bache, um the other night. Saw that. Holy crap, it was so good. Yeah. Um, I don't typically spend that much on a night out. Um, so yeah. it was really, really a special, special treat for us to get to go out. So, um, you know, if, if I was able to go on a date night once a week, my pocketbook probably wouldn't go there. But I tell you what, I'm looking forward to saving up and like going back as often as I can possibly afford it. That meal was just incredible. I love the atmosphere. Um, it's yeah, in the Windmill really Town cool. Center, Drifting Wind Run, and Highway 290. Um, you have to make a reservation on Open Table right now. And um, my favorite dish from the other night, it's so simple, but it was so good. It was a plate of uh, tomatoes on goat cheese. Yeah. And okay. like, I think it was like a focaccia type bread that was with it. And it was really, really good. Um, very, very good. So, if I can sweet talk my husband into taking me out somewhere, I'll always pick there moving forward. Uh, but, you know, honestly, for for me, I'd rather grab a fishing pole and just go sit with him somewhere and just chill. Absolutely. I, I would say we need to devote one of these to, to fishing holes around Dripping Springs, but I don't want to give up all of my secrets. <laughs> Let's that. Yeah, yeah. Um, with you on that. I also don't want to admit to where I'm fishing that I'm probably not supposed to be. So That's <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to put that out on the internet. <laughs> that too. People be coming and running us off. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. Um, okay. We're so crazy. We're at 20 minutes already. So I want to talk a little, well, 
first of all, guys, you're supposed to do this every 10 minutes, evidently, when you're doing a broadcast like this, and we haven't been doing it, but I'm going to do it again really quickly. Chris Peshek with Jackson Properties, with Ashley Tullis of the Bond team at Keller Williams, uh, two local real estate agents hanging out, just talking about everything dripping springs. If you've got any questions about places to eat, things to do, where to go, I mean, anywhere from getting your car fixed to uh, a nice French meal, pop it into the comments. We'll see them. We can answer them. Uh, if we don't have the answers, uh, we can get back with you next week. We're going to do this every Monday at two o'clock, correct? The yes, weekly we trip. Sure are. We sure are. And um, just for the folks watching, obviously you're watching real estate agents. If you're curious what's happening in the market, it is insanity. <laughs> it's craziness, y'all. My gosh. <laughs> and, and you know, I was going to do a, a, one of my um, passenger seat real estate videos today and just talk a little bit about how when the market, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, sometimes people think our job is easy. And <laughs> I was just thinking about everything that I've been through in the last two months with my clients and everything that my clients have been through. This job is hard, 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 hard if you do it correctly like Ashley does. So thanks, um, Chris. <laughs> it, it's true. And it, it's definitely dog eat dog. I mean, I've probably said more in the last five years, I'm a, I'm a real estate agent, not a therapist than I can count. Um, <laughs> it's people's biggest investment typically. So, you know, you got to be sensitive to that. And then you got to juggle going to bat for them. You know, when you're, when you're listing their home, you got to get them every freaking penny you possibly can. And yeah. then when you're trying to help them buy a new home, well, you got to help them save every freaking penny that you can. That's and, right. uh, it's it's kind of tough to do that in the world of multiple offers. Um, I listed a home Friday at 8 a.m. Last night, I sat down with six offers that I needed to put side by side. I mean, it is moving, 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 moving. Um, I'm writing offers and I'm competing left and right. Um, so it's, yeah. guys, if you're, you're thinking I want to buy or sell, you don't have to buy or sell with Chris or I but please go get somebody that knows what they're doing because it's yeah. a big battle of time if you don't. It's that, and, and that's the key, somebody that knows what they're doing. And if you don't know how to find out if they know, ask them questions, just ask a bunch of questions and you'll find out real fast whether or not they know. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. And honestly, we could probably teach people, like here's the questions you need to ask. <laughs> You know, say that, Ashley. Mm. How many houses have you helped people buy and sell? That'd be a good place to start. And it's hey, everybody starts somewhere. I was That's a newbie. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, it's not anything against new agents um, no, or agents that haven't been in the business for a couple of years. I mean, we, we were both there. Um, yeah. You just got to know that they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And you know, I can't think of anybody that's like more enthusiastic about Dripping Springs than you and I. So I know that in addition to bringing great real estate knowledge to folks, we're going to bring you guys a lot of content about the community, hopefully yeah. teach you some things and we want to learn from you too and uncover new places that we haven't found yet. That's right. Uh, and so nobody, still nobody has commented anything about their favorite places. So we'll keep going. Um, I wanted to, so you already mentioned yours, you, I, I guess, well, but I don't know. So I'll ask you again, what I wanted to get at on this version or on this episode was what's the last local business that you shopped at? Was it Levache or was it something else? That's a really good question. Um, so for those that um, don't follow me on Facebook, um, I would check out my Instagram, Ash Tullis. Um, every Friday, a member of our team, the bond team, we're a bunch of boss babes in real estate. We do a live like a local segment. So Friday was actually my day to live like a local literally all day. And um, first thing in the morning, I stopped by um, Drippin Design Company. That is run by um, Rebecca Smart here locally. She makes all of my customized doormats. I mean, you can't oh, get more from it pop than going to her front door to get your doormat. I mean, super mom and pop. So I'm gonna link her down below in the comments. After that, I went and grabbed a breakfast taco at the sit go. Um, I had to run to a closing, so I kind of was at a lull for lunch. Uh, Simply Faux that just opened in Belterra Village, that was on the menu for lunch. Um, the ladies at the rural home on Mercer Street are always gonna get a shout out for me. I just adore them, Renee and Lori. 
um, that's across the street from the Wells Fargo. I picked up some um, cast iron pig bookends. I was gonna mess that up if I tried to say it too fast. <laughs> they just have the cutest stuff in there. Um, all of my bird seed comes from Wild Birds Unlimited right across behind McDonald's. Um, and then for for dinner, we went to La Vache. But the very last business that day that I shopped at that's local is uh, Grawlix just off of Mercer Street. Um, they are not open inside. It's still all to go. Um, but once they can your drink, what you do with it is up to you. So we chose to sit at a picnic table and have a drink. Um, and it was where we very last spent our live like a local dollars that day. So you've completely outshone me. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> Where's the last place? Well, here's the last 15. Take well, that. And it was really because it was my very intentional focus day. Oh, I forgot oh. when. Um, Style and Beauty by Priscilla, also on Mercer Street. <laughs> She's my laser lady. Um, <laughs> She's going to make sure that I wake up and look done and, you know, keep me young forever. There you go. I need to go to her. Did yeah, you, you want to go? Yeah, yeah. Oh. We could laser it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to talk about the last place I went. Um, okay. And well, and it, this actually, it, it means a lot because there's a, a large national brand in town too that they compete against. Uh, but if you don't know that it's there, Triple S Feed is at Bell Springs and 290 on the west side of town. And Ashley, you mentioned you get your bird seed from Wild Bird and I know they're locally owned. Triple um, S is where we get our bird seed and my deer corn and my wife might have a small problem uh, wanting to feed all the deer in the county um, out in front of our house. So we get her deer protein there. So all the babies have enough milk to drink. Um, but realistically, Triple S has got everything that um, I'll go ahead and say the name of the other, but everything that you might buy at Tractor Supply, you can get at Triple S feed. Um, mm -hmm. And actually they've got a better selection of a lot of stuff. Like I needed, um, I needed six inch PVC pipe fittings for my rainwater collection. I've got to do a little bit of, a, of an adjustment on it. And I was going all over the place trying to figure out where in the heck I could buy these, these fittings. And finally I messaged uh, Monica Swenson. I was like, hey, Monica, do y'all carry these huge PVC pipe fittings? And she's like, yeah, just come by. And they've got a huge selection of everything that you need for rainwater collection. It's crazy. Um, they've got all, like um, a lot of the local business little niche candle soaps things like that in there um, everything for your pets horses cows i mean it's like it's like the walmart of tractor supply but it's local because they've got you know everything what? they've got a ton of stuff you know what triple s actually like reminds me of it's like our version or the parallel of wimberley's ace hardware where it's not yeah, really like, like freedom just fun, but local. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's not really yeah. just a bead store. It's like, no. oh, I need a quick grip gift for so and so. They're yes. gonna have something in there for sure. It's not just like for feed, which I it, that like blows my mind. It's kind of a misleading name, honestly. It, it is. Well, but I think I think like a lot of things in Dripping Springs, they've evolved over the years. My wife just <laughs> let my dog in. <laughs> hey, Charlie. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to come over, but I think they've had to evolve over the years like you were talking about, but now they do. They have such a huge selection. Uh, I mean, they always have onion sets and tomatoes and, and different herbs and stuff like that when it's the right time to plant them. Um, let me grab my dog. Oh. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, girl. Oh, my gosh. She has grown. Yes, you have yeah, she's grown. She's grown. She's about 40 pounds now. So anyway, um, they have, uh, what was I going to say? Um, port swings, you know, stuff for the outside, decorative stuff. I mean, yeah, just all kinds of stuff at Triple S. So I'm a huge fan, uh, not only for food, for Charlie Mutt and all of that other stuff, but also just stuff that I need to do around the house. I mean, so, so many of us are, are on land out here that, you know, we need stuff like that, chainsaws and, and, pumps and water supply stuff they, they've got everything so yeah oh i totally agree i totally agree cool. now you had um i i think i i won on quantity but i know you definitely were in there with quality 
<laughs> good stuff there. <laughs> oh, I forgot. My, my wife, I'm sorry. Um, the reason my dog is in here now is because she's leaving to go see Dr. Drain at the chiropractic. So. Oh, I love Drano. He's so yeah. good. He's so, so good. <laughs> anyway. All right, woman, 30 minutes. Should we That's wrap it up? All right. Yep. Good deal. Um, next Monday, same bat time, same bat channel, correct? Yep. Two o'clock. All yep, right. I if, you know, if anybody's got, again, if you've got any questions about anything Dripping Springs, ask. If we don't know between the two of us, we know so many people that we can find the answer for you. Uh, it's it's not that difficult to make a couple phone calls. So if you need something in our community, let us know. Um, yeah, there you go. Play All us right, out. Yeah. After. Uh, great to see you, Chris. I don't really know what play us out means. Um, um, like play the piano, play us out. Oh, we don't have theme music yet, so it's no. It, it we still fun. need a theme song. Somebody, we do. We do. <laughs> All right. Yes, give me a theme song, please. Help Dripping Springs. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, man. Have a great day, Dripping. Have a great week. <laughs>